today we are reviewing the Gigabyte Radeon RX Vega 64, which is the latest offering that from AMD, the new RX Vega, which was just announced um, on July 31st at the uh, SIGGRAPH 2017 in Los Angeles at the AMD Capsaicin event. Now, this video card um, has rumored to be um, giving a hash rate, of, a Ethereum hash rate of 75 to 100 mega hashes per second. We will see. Let's go go ahead and open it up. It does come with the um, a power splitter. Um, the video card does come with, I believe, two. Um, eight pin power connectors we will verify that once we get this open um, the gigabyte version is rated for, with a base clock of 1247 megahertz with a boost clock of 1546 megahertz comes with a gigabyte of the HBM2 RAM which is at 2048 bit so it is a single fan blower style reference design with two 8-pin power input. The Radeon logo does light up. Let's go and look at the back. Now, this is something familiar for those who have owned the R9 series, uh, the GPU tech which is an LED that shows the load. Now, the ports that comes with, with most of these reference design is one HDMI 2.0B and three, DVI, uh, three DisplayPort 1.4. I don't know why the uh, reference designs don't come with a DVI port, um, but because it's a single fan blower design, it does um, need room for uh, exhaust. So now we're going to do the uh, All right. bench board. Thank you again for watching this review of the Radeon RX Vega 64 a gig version, the air cool version by Gigabyte. Not the silver, but the black version. Um, you can go to Gigabyte's website. It has all the stats. Now for the driver, we've downloaded the latest RX Vega series driver for Windows 10 64-bit for AMD.com. And we're using Claymore 9.8, which is the latest version that has added Vega card support. And uh, as you can see right here in the GPU-Z, um, even with the latest GPU-Z, there's a lot of unknowns, but at least it shows that it's a Vega. Uh, with the HBM2 memory, 8 gig of it. And in MSI Afterburner, you see that the default clock is actually 1630 for core and then memory clock of 945. This is the complete opposite of what we're usually used to as miners. Uh, we're us used to a lower core clock and a higher memory clock, and now it's uh, flipped. So. Uh, real quick, we're going to run the uh, regular uh, Ethereum only, and uh, I've also created files for benchmarking the 140, 150, 160, 170, and 180 epoch numbers. Uh, right now, you're going to see that uh, right now we're on 138. Uh, pay attention to the mem the uh, temperature here, especially the GPU HBM temperature. That's going to go way up. Um, we're, so we start with a 33.6 mega hashes per second, which is nothing even close to the 75 to 100 mega hashes per second that's been rumored before the release of the card. Um, now, this card did just release on Monday, and um, <clears throat> today is Wednesday. I got my card. Uh, it arrived today in the mail. And so we are doing this as we go um, as you can see temperature is climbing very fast and that has negatively impacted the hash rate in fact as the temperature climbs the hash rate is going to continue to go down and this is going to be the case um, regardless of the epoch because 
I don't think these cars have any uh, thermal solution for the VRAM. Um, and the thermal solution for the GPU core is horrible as well to begin with. You have a single blower fan style um, that traditionally gets hotter anyway, uh, coupled with, you know, reference design heatsink. It's just not a good solution. Um, I would say so, wait. Wait until the better versions with the aftermarket cooling by different manufacturers come out. Um, so hopefully they'll have solved the issue um, of the VRAM temperature gets so high by then. We're looking at September, October time frame before more will be released. Uh, right now we're in October, I mean in August. And in August, it's uh, we got the reference cards to deal with and they are not looking good. As you can see, with the uh, temperature of the VRAM, the HBM temperature at 95 degrees Celsius, um, its uh, hash rate is down to 30 point something. And we started with 33.6. All right, we're going to stop this and we're going to uh, run the uh, the different epoch uh, real quick. And well, I'll fast forward that part and so you can just see. Um, what kind of decline to be expected and I'll tell you this right now there's definitely going to be a drop in the hash rate um, and it's not a minor drop okay be right back okay let's go ahead and launch the 140 epoch and see what the hash rate will be if I remember it correctly you're not going to see a huge difference here 33.6 so between now and epoch 140 you're not really going to see a huge drop um, but as the temperature climb you're going to see a another drop um, big due to the heat issue here we go this is awful horrible All right, gonna close this. And let's go to Epoch 150 benchmark. If you don't know how to uh, do benchmark in Claymore, basically in the command line of the bat file, just add uh, dash benchmark space and then a number for the Epoch. All right, at Epoch 150, we see a drop. Now it's at 32 point something. And then as the temperature climbs, it drops. This uh, scenario just keeps repeating itself and it's not looking good. Now the temperature does return to a tolerable range uh, immediately right after you close the um, miner but we'll do 160 So at 160, we're at 31.9. So, so far, not a huge decline, you know, from 33 to 32 to 31, um, except for the temperature hit. Let's close this. It's not until Epoch 170. And here's the drop. So at Epoch 170, the Vega 64, the RX Vega 64 drops to 28.4. 28.4. 
28.5 from a 31.9. That's a pretty significant drop. And then finally, our last benchmark is at Epoch 180. And at 180, we're down to 24.9. Wow. I'm almost speechless. Okay, just so, just for curiosity's sake, um, I tried to set the epoch number way high to 200 and 240, and they all stop at 199. So I think that is the limitation of the Claymore 9.8's uh, benchmark parameter is at epoch 199 and at epoch 199 we're looking at 20.9 so just under 21 mega hashes per second um, at epoch 199 so in conclusion vega rx vega series are not ready for prime time mining um, the driver is immature, the thermal solution of the video cards are not there, and um, the power consumption is way too high, as well as the price point, which make them very undesirable, uh, very inefficient, um, and you should, if you're continuing mining, you should stick with the RX 400 and 500 series or the NVIDIA. Uh, 1060, 1070, 1080, even 1080 Ti, but I would not recommend to go that that route because it's just way too costly. You're not going to get the uh, return on investment. So stick with the 1060s and the 1070s maybe, and then stick with the RX 400s and 500s. Um, the price for the RX 400s and 500s have really come back down to a much more reasonable pricing. Um, I would say give it until... Uh, September to October before um, investing in the RX Vega series for mining purposes. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this video. Um, if you have, please uh, go ahead and click that thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, you want to make sure you do because we are resuming our uh, monthly cryptocurrency giveaway. Uh, in July, we gave away Ethereum, and we'll be giving away a different type of cryptocurrency every month uh, until December. And in December, we're giving away the the big uh, Bitcoin. So stay tuned to that. Uh, again, welcome to the channel, Zorkon DIY Techie, and hopefully, I'll see you guys in all the future videos. Have a great day. Bye bye.